Welcome to 2021, my fellow pals. I'm Daniel Bandian, the host of the Pals TV, the experience podcast series. You know, I will admit, 2020 was a very hard year to go through. With all of the hardships that we experienced, it is actually important that we use them as an opportunity to grow and to treat them like a learning curve. So that way we can actually thrive in 2021, as well as the years after those. I just want you all to remember, okay, that we will all get through the year. Just it's important that you all maintain a strong, positive mindset, no matter what. Now, before we start, if you haven't yet, please be sure to follow us on our social media accounts and to hit the subscribe button below. You can also keep up with the We Are Pals platform by signing up for our newsletter, all of which will be listed below. So for today's special guest on the We Are Pals, the Experience Podcast, I'm actually going to feature a wonderful and talented young female artist, Siege Frankera. So honestly, I'm just super excited to feature her on today's episode because it's like, I've heard some of her recent songs and they've done pretty well, like on Spotify, like the streaming, like the numbers are pretty high. And then it seems like on YouTube, they're also doing, they're also like picking up and performing well on YouTube. So something that I've actually been doing is with regards to like By Your Side and Record Song, I've actually been listening to them on my own. So to you, my fellow pals, I encourage you all to check them out. Now, without any further ado, let's say hi to Siege Frankera. Hello, Siege. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. I'm super stoked for the new year. 2021, baby. 2021 is going to be the one. <laughs> 21. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like, this is a little off topic, but it's like whenever I hear like 21, I always think of three artists. 21, mm-hmm. the K-pop artist, the K-pop, the, the K-pop band the group, 21. Yeah. And then I think of 21 Savage. And <laughs> I think of 21 Pilots. <laughs> 21 is a lucky number, I guess. 21. I mean, it is three sevens. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's very true. 777. <laughs> Perfect. So I guess starting off, I just want to say congratulations on all of your success. As I mentioned earlier, you know, for the Spotify analytics, I actually saw it on your Instagram. I just want to say great job because they've been they've been performing pretty well. And like I said, I've been listening to them, the on your, the by your side song as well as um, the record song. And I typically listen to them while I'm driving or whenever I'm working on my own projects. So, you know, they're very great to listen to and I really love the vibes they give off. With that being said, I'd actually like to learn a little bit more about you and your experiences, especially with music. I was wondering if you could introduce yourself. Um, so my name is Siege. Um, I am a singer songwriter. Uh, I guess I started my music career officially around two, three years ago. Oh, well, it's 2021 now. So I guess you'd call it four years. Um, But previous to that, I had always been in the performing arts. I had, um, you know, kind of typical Asian kid and all the music lessons, voice lessons, um, anything I could really get into when it came to performing arts. Um, But it was only until after it wasn't until after college that I really decided I wanted to um, pursue it as a career and to um, start putting my own original songs out there. So uh, yeah, just been working on that. Um, things really took off when I started working with uh, with my cousin, James Frankera. It's a Frankera thing, you know? And uh, yeah, it's just been a really, I guess, fast and crazy journey since we started, which was uh, I guess officially June of last year of 2020. So during the quarantine, we, we were uh, we were lucky to be able to, to quarantine with each other and we got a lot done during that time. So now that it's 2021, um, we still have a lot of music uh, lined up, a lot of things, um, I guess, in store. But yeah, it's been crazy so far, but fun, crazy and fun. You know, I actually find it very interesting that you mentioned how the quarantine actually gave um, all of you time to work on the music. And I mm-hmm. actually find that pretty good because since during the quarantine, many individuals are actually struggling because it's like, you know, 
with everything happening, it's like, you know, be, being like, you know, trapped at home, it just gives off that, like, you know, that sad feeling that, oh no, it's pretty upsetting because we can't go out. We can't like, you know, be able to go out and socialize. But, yeah. you know, by bringing that idea up of, you know, working on music at home, I think that's actually a pretty good thing to do because it not only gives you time for yourself, but it also allows you to get stuff done in a sense. Mm -hmm. And also it's a great way to keep your mind off of, you know, everything happening around you. Just, you know, just, yeah. Cause it's like, like we, like we always mention, like um, there's always that escapism when it comes to music. And yeah. then it seems like it's not only just when you listen to the music, but it's also the process of, you know, production. Creating it and everything. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I think I was able to survive the quarantine because of, um, because of music. So it's definitely like my, it was my coping mechanism uh, during that time. But I think that um, just being able to work remotely and being able to um, work with artists that are comfortable with working remotely, uh, because a, a big part about music is collaboration. And most of the time you are in the same room with the other person. But um, this time it's more like you have to be on your own and kind of work off your own vibes create something, send it out to somebody else who's gonna add their thing and add their thing. And, you know, and I guess the benefit is you have more time because you're on your own and like, you don't have to feel the pressure of, you know, takes how it is like traditionally, but it's also kind of like tapping into your own, I guess, motivation and um, willpower to like get it done, even if you're on your own. Definitely, definitely. Those are actually like some pretty important points that I would mention. It's like, you know, the motivation, it's typically motivation. It's the thing that will keep you, encourage you to keep going. Even at the hardest of times, no matter what, it's important, like, you know, it's you, that you maintain both motivation and passion. So I really like your perspectives on those. And those are definitely important. Thank you. You're welcome. It was, it was kind of hard to get to, I admit, in the beginning. Um, because like I said, we only really started in June and then the quarantine has been since like March. So, you know, those first few months were hard to get through. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, because I had the support of my family and I was with my family, that was like a big, that was a big factor. I, I can't imagine, you know, uh, having to do this quarantine by myself or isolating by myself. That would have been like very hard and props to everybody that was able to do that in all of 2020. <laughs> Props to all of them. I just want to let everyone know, since like, you know, we made it through 2020. And you know, as a result of everything that happened in 2020, I hope we could all use this as an opportunity to grow and use our experiences from 2020 as a learning curve. So that way we could thrive through 2021. So I yeah. think that's going to be definitely important to do. I guess before we move on to the next question, um, I'm just going to let the pals know early. No, um, oh my gosh, I'm flubbering my words. Ah, Daniel. Go ahead. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but you yeah, um, hey. But earlier, Siege also mentioned that she worked with James Francara. Um, I don't know if you know, if any of you all know this, but James Francara was actually featured on the first episode of the Pals TV Experience podcast. So it's like, you know, that idea of everyone coming together and working together, it's like, that's definitely something that is like super fun. Like, let me put it this way. When it comes to working in projects, okay, I honestly, you know, say collaboration is very important. That when it comes to groups, everybody must put in their all. So, because whenever we all put in our all, we always get the best product possible. Oh yeah, I definitely yeah. agree. Um, collaboration is also really important to me. I think that's why um, the fact that I'm able to do all of this with my with my cousins, people that I've like known my entire life, um, it's very important. And I also uh, I had the benefit of meeting people that were very generous in what they wanted to contribute um, in the whole collaboration. I think that's really what made it, especially for my um, my first two tracks. They were co-produced by um, his name is Andrew. And he was able to do all those things uh, remotely. He sent everything like uh, we hadn't met with him one time during all the, the whole production phase. And then my most recent project by your side, um, that was actually like one and a half years in the making. And that was a completely like collaborative project. Like it began with a demo that I then brought to um, 
my friend that's a producer, Miguel. And from there, he turned it into this, this just like out of this world. Um, I guess people now are telling me that it sounds like a Bond song, like a James Bond intro song, which I love because I didn't realize that it did sound like that. Um, but from there, I was able to uh, show it to my other friend who's a director, Bettina. She made a whole concept out, out of it. And now we have the music video that's just crazy, amazing. And um, I think what I, the point I'm trying to make is that sometimes when you begin something, the way that you want it, the final output that it's, it's going to be, you can't really expect what it is going to actually become because um, the project or whatever you're working on kind of takes on a life of its own. And it's through passing um, through the hands of like all these collaborators that it just gets, you know, better and better. And um, I think part of it is having trust in the people you're working with, but also kind of um, getting into that creative process. I really like that. You know, I, it's, it's interesting you bring up the idea of how the final product won't exactly always match what you had in the blueprint. And I really yeah. like that a lot. Okay. I kind of noticed that tends to be something similar when it comes to filmmaking. Like mm -hmm. from my own personal experiences, like when I've, you know, directed a few films, of course, like we have our pre-production, like we have, like we write the scripts and then we have a shot list. And then of course, it's like we have all of those ready as well as the budgeting. But of course, like something that happens is while we're in the process of production, some of the things that we do during production don't are either different from what we have in like the pre-production phase or we actually have some stuff that are added in or if there's this moment where something doesn't work out, we just scrap it and then do something else. So that's definitely an important takeaway with anything that we cannot always expect everything to happen by the blueprint, but what we must do is appreciate the changes that come up. So I really like that you bring that up. So the next question that I wanted to ask was, how did you get into music and who are some of your influences? And um, I was wondering if you could, you know, maybe take us a little bit on your overall musical journey. Ooh, my influences, loaded question, okay. <laughs> Let me, I guess, start from the beginning. Um, I am very much influenced by, I guess you could call old, older music, older sounding. Um, I was able to train a little bit in jazz um, through some really talented uh, voice, voice teachers. Um, I grew up on like the standards, like classics, um, my grandma listened to a lot of Shirley Bassey and um, actually through all the generations. So it's like Andy Williams, Shirley Bassey, um, ABBA. <laughs> so I kind of taken a little bit of everything. And um, I think that's really influenced my style now. I don't really even know what to say, like how to call my genre because I am taking a little bit of everything, but I the definitely there's that, um, there's that vintage influence there. And I think right now what I'm trying to do is um, take those elements and put it into a more, I guess, modern sound uh, because it really is such beautiful music and it's something that I really resonate with. I guess it's that kind of like nostalgia that I that I enjoy about it. Um, there, I think, I'm trying to think of like my musical influences from, I guess, the, this generation or like more of a modern time. Uh, Frank Ocean is definitely up there. I I just really, I love him so much as a songwriter and um, a singer as well. Uh, he has that, he really has that voice. Um, another person that really influences me is uh, Lana Del Rey. Another person that kind of takes on the vintage and makes it into, you know, the modern. Uh, Amy Winehouse is another one, again, with the jazz, making it modern. And uh, I guess the list goes, the list goes on, but I think maybe an influence that people wouldn't expect is I'm uh, very much, uh, I love, consume, um, am inspired by hip hop. I'm really into hip hop, rap. And uh, I think I pick up on that a little bit in my music. Um, I, I'm not a rapper, but definitely like in the production, there's a little bit of that there too. That's a pretty good, you know, that's a pretty good, like, you know, 
combination of influences. I must admit, like that's a pretty interesting combination, but it all works out in the end because, you know, like what I liked was, okay, I guess starting off, you know, ABBA, oh my gosh, that was yeah. my childhood. <laughs> ABBA is oh, like yeah. iconic. You are the dancing queen. <laughs> Young and sweet, only 17. Oh my gosh, I love ABBA. And then I also love how you also mentioned like, you know, Frank Ocean and Lana Del Rey and Amy Winehouse. And then you also like mentioned like your, um, like you also implement some aspects of hip hop into your music. So it when you like, even if like they may seem like, you know, different like areas of music, mm -hmm. when you put them all together, you get fireworks. So oh, yeah. I actually like how you put all of them together. Um, I guess what I wanted to ask was when you do this one, was it like, did you do it in terms of like, you know, experimenting with sounds trial and error? Or did you do it in terms of, I guess this is the plan I want to go for? Um, I think that for my original songs, at least, I find that I like to, whatever the genre of the song is, um, because my past three songs have all kind of had their own unique um, genre. So record being more of like that disco and um, fly is more R&B. And then um, the most recent one, By Your Side, I don't even know what to call that. <laughs> like that, that's pop. Um, but for me, what's really important is that I think about the sound of the song and I kind of imagine everything else that would like um, complete it. So there's like a look that goes with it too. There's a vibe that goes with it. And each one of those songs is an experiment in itself. It's also like experimenting with my own like capabilities because I'm not really sure what genre is the best for me or what I'm going to be. I guess, marked by. So I think this, what I'm really trying to do is um, experiment with as many sounds as I can, um, create a song in each sound and kind of just put it out there. And um, I think it's, it's, I think it's really nice when people tell me that they have a favorite of one of my songs and then I meet somebody else and it's another favorite. Like everybody has their own thing. Everybody has like a song that like speaks to them. And um, Ultimately, I know that's a result of my experimentation, but it's also a result of my being open to like any possibility. You know, I gotta say that's actually pretty good how, um, something that I picked up is that you mentioned that you don't like exactly like have a specific divine, defined genre. And actually that's actually pretty good because when it comes to, um, when it comes to music, I feel and genres, well, I mean, this is just something I observed. I honestly don't know exactly much about it since <laughs> I'll admit I'm not very musically talented. Like I don't know much <laughs> about music. But I mean, um, I can en enjoy music, love music. Yeah, but I kind of noticed that there's that little pressure that comes up where they say, if you're this genre, you have to sing this. If you're that, you have to sing this. And I'm thinking, yeah. why do we have to box people in like, a specific why do we have to box people in and like limit their overall capabilities if a person you know who sings one thing wants to like explore out outside of other genres just let them yeah I agree so I guess the next question that I wanted to ask was in terms of your music what do you generally like to explore or like what are some themes that you like to explore in general um I like this question a lot because the songwriting part of my music is actually my, like, I guess, favorite part. It's definitely the part I feel more comfortable with. Uh, production in itself is very in intimidating, um, but of course necessary because you can't get the song out if you don't do the production. It's kind of the second half. But I guess songwriting in itself is very intuitive for me and like the wordplay and all that stuff. Um, so the way I would describe my Musical style, the themes that I go for is, uh, I it's very reflective of my life. Um, I put in a lot of my own experiences into my music. And sometimes I kind of build on that. Like, like I said um, before, I kind of imagine that the whole thing when I, when I make a song. So it's not just the music, it's not just the sound, it's the aesthetic, it's the style. And I guess each song um, is a character in itself. 
So when I'm writing the song, I think about um, I think about the character of the song, um, what she is going through, or even sometimes I've written songs like in the perspective or what I would think of the perspective to be like, um, not not me. Um, it's as weird as that <laughs> as it sounds. Uh, so for like for example, um, my first song record, it's a very kind of like love struck. Um, character some she's really you know she's really in love with um with the person with her I guess lover I don't know a better way to better way to put it uh she's really enamored by by him so there's that uh same too with fly but there's kind of that touch of um I know that you know things might not work out but let's try anyway so that's that kind of character as well I think she's different from record and definitely for By Your Side, um, the girl that's singing there is not just singing to, you know, her best friend, she's singing to herself. She's um, she's going through a rough time, but she's just trying to make it through. And I guess like all these different themes of love, um, uh, self-awareness and uh, I guess struggle, uh, these are all things that I really, try to explore because they're just things that I am exploring on my own like in my in my life at my age and I'm just excited because I know that with each phase of my life I'll be talking about different things I'll have different themes that come that come up and um, I'm just lucky that people can resonate with the things that I'm talking about and that they can use them those songs in their own way that's a very good explanation of, you know, how, like, some of the background for some of your songs. I really like how you connect the meanings that are derived in each song to, like, your own personal experiences. And I really like how you just, how, like, of course, it's like you put your own spin on it. So that way it's relatable to many audiences. So I actually find that a very good method to do. And, you know, it's like... With the music you make, it's like it could convey a lot about an artist, about like their experiences and their perspectives. So I really like the implement the connection between, you know, personal experiences and music a lot. So I feel like that's a very important thing that, you know, many people could be aware of. My next question is, I'm actually very curious about your overall process. So I know that you are a singer and songwriter in which you worked with many other producers and artists. I also noticed that your music videos, posters, and albums have like a very visually appealing aesthetic. Like it's like the moment we see it, it's like everything is like the colors are amazing. And it's like everything you see, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like just visually beautiful. It's like so picturesque. What I wanted to ask was like, how does the overall collaboration work? Um, I guess uh, I like, I tend to approach it um, and it, it's it's hard to say this because people don't really like to say it this way, but I guess because I come from a business background, I tend to approach the song um, kind of like a product. And so um, in my day job, I, I work in marketing. So I think that that gives me kind of a very um, informed perspective on how products should be presented and made. So it all begins with the song. That's really the main part and everything else can is kind of like the marketing. Uh, so for me, I need to begin with a very uh, solid song structure, uh, the lyrics, that's where it comes from. Uh, I'll make a demo from that um, and I'll find producers or sometimes they, I, they luckily find me and uh, together we'll create the song, um, make sure that the sound is um, kind of with what I want it to be. But then again, also giving them the leeway and giving them the trust to develop it how they think it should be. Uh, so from there, the song, all of that, then it goes to the sound engineer. And in this case, I'm lucky that it also James, <laughs> who helps me with everything else too. Um, that's another, time that I need to uh, be there so that the sound is still aligned with what I was you know what I was what I want it to be but also giving them that little bit of space too so I think that it's the back and forth that's really important um, 
knowing when to like push your idea and knowing when to back off. So if I'm sound engineer, then it goes out. It's time for um, it to either turn into a music video or have some sort of visual aid with it. Uh, from there, I like to have visual kind of like inspiration. Uh, it's, it's like if I can convey to them kind of the idea of what I want, of course, I know it's not going to totally end up that way. That's why it's inspiration. Um, but it's very difficult to describe something to somebody without, you know, visual aid, especially if it's going to be a visualizer, a music video. So I put together a storyboard, put together a mood board, show it to them, um, write a little bit of a treatment for, for them, or sometimes I give it to them and let them do it. With By Your Side, that whole aesthetic experience was all because of the director. So all I had to do then was give her the song and she came up with you know everything. Um, and it, it was amazing. So it's, again, communication, um, having trust in the person that you're collaborating with, and ultimately just letting the product, the product project uh, develop and let it grow. That's actually pretty good because it's like, you know, depending on the project and what you create, some of the process is not always going to be the same. But what I yeah. find interesting is the fact that like, you know, there's this journey to when it comes to creating music and as well as like the videos and the promotions that come out. So I really would say definitely there's an importance to have a balance with like, you know, the visuals as well as the good music and the marketing which you bring up so all of those are important and definitely come into play so i guess with regards to this um what advice would you offer for people who want to pursue music oh man just do it <laughs> just do it because um of course in the beginning you're always going to have doubt but uh doubt faith does not exist without doubt so before you can have faith in yourself, you kind of need to question, you know, why am I doing this? What am I doing it for? And soon enough, you'll find that faith in yourself, but the ultimate move is just to do it. Um, also because you'll never get good at something if you don't start off and be bad at it. So don't worry too much about being perfect right off the bat. You're gonna have to go through a lot of iterations and um, a lot of struggles before you can get there. But you'll never get there if you never start. So that that's a big one. Um, do you, I guess, use the resources at your disposal, whether it's your laptop or hell, even on your phone. I, I started some, let's see, the demo for record and some of the tracks that are still on record, the, the final output, um, I made on my phone, uh, GarageBand on my phone. Those are just um, Apple loops and they're available to for free. So yeah, make the most of it. Um, really, you're probably standing in your own way if you do feel um, extreme doubt about what you're doing. Uh, find people that um, enjoy doing the same thing you do because you can learn a lot from them. You could go together. Um, it's not as fun to do it on your own. Uh, it's a lot more fun to do it with people that you enjoy, that also enjoy uh, doing what you're trying to do. So find your people, find your tribe, I guess, and uh, just go for it. That's really great advice. To the fellow pals who hear this, remember to, you know, follow Siege's advice to just keep doing it. And I really like that you mentioned that along the way, it's expected that we'll have to, that we'll face struggles. But, you know, and I really like that you bring that up. But then I also like how you mentioned that just don't give up. I, that's really, really important. So, you know, I really appreciate you mentioning that one. So shifting gears into PALS, I wanted to ask actually, what are your experiences with positivity, appreciation, and support? Um, hmm. Positivity is, it, it's kind of a hard concept for me personally. Uh, but I, I find that uh, the way that I can maintain positivity in my life is honestly by be being very real with myself. And um, 
acknowledging all the things that I do have so that I feel like I have more than I don't, than I, that I lack. And I think a big part about being positive or staying positive is, is appreciation um, and gratitude. So just being appreciative of the people in your life, the things that you have, being grateful for what uh, you've been through, the things that you've learned um, that will allow you to stay positive and really uh, not take things in your life for granted so that you can move forward and um, help more people, help yourself. Uh, and all to do that, of course, you need the support of your loved ones, um, of yourself. That's a really big um that's a really big thing that I, I learned. And it's, um, it's actually the main theme of um, By Your Side. Uh, it's, By Your Side is actually, it's uh, the way that it's written, the, the POV, it sounds like I'm singing it to somebody else, like I'm the, you know, supportive best friend or some, something like that. But uh, By Your Side is actually a song that I wrote to myself, for myself, like I'm singing to me. And um, I realized that um, when you go through tough times, sometimes your your first instinct is to reach out for other people and to like want their support. And sometimes you get a little bit disappointed, you know, when people can't provide that for you. Um, if, you know, they're going through their own thing or if they're just like things, it's not the support that you, that you want or that you're expecting. But the best support that you could receive is from yourself. And sometimes you just need to be like by your own side and be your own ride or die. You know, that sounds great. That really sounds great. The way that you actually integrated those terms together, I actually really like the way that you put it all together in terms of, you know, also connecting it with your music by using, you know, by your side as an ex as one of the important examples. So I really actually appreciate that and like that a lot. With that said, that actually kind of in a way relates to the next question that I wanted to ask. So I actually like that you bring that up. So do you think there is a connection between music and positive vibes? Oh yeah, definitely. Scientifically, um, it's been proven, but I think everyone can say from experience that um, when you're feeling down, sometimes all you need to do is play your favorite song and you know, you're back up there, you're feeling positive, you're feeling good again. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would agree that there is, uh, I would say that songwriting and music, listening to music, creating music is definitely a way that I tend to cope with, uh, the harder parts. Um, and just being able to channel all of the things that I'm going through into a song is, it's really nice. Yeah, that's actually pretty, pretty important because, um, what, what you bring up is the idea of, you know, first the scientific, like, example. <laughs> I love that you mentioned that one, but then you also, like, also back that up with, like, you know, some of the experiences when it comes to um, listening to music. And, you know, I, my favorite part was that you mentioned how you, you would write songs as a coping mechanism for, like, you know, everything that's happening. So, it kind of reveals to us that in terms of like music and positive vibes, it actually, all of them co can come together, but they come from multiple sources and channels in different ways. So it's like when we see like all the connections and interconnections, it all, it all works out. It works out perfectly. I guess what I'm going to ask next is, um, what do you appreciate mainly? Um, what would you say is the importance of appreciation and how can we, be more appreciative of our own values? Uh, I'm beginning to realize as I get older that, that appreciation and gratitude is everything. And uh, right now I am definitely appreciating uh, my family. I think quarantine also taught me that too. Um, it's the first time I'm really living with my family for the first time in almost like five years, maybe even more. Um, so I'm really appreciating having them around. And I realize that a lot of effort needs to be put in to cultivate good relationships. And it begins with your, with your family. So there's that. Uh, gratitude, I think, is so important, especially in times when you don't 
feel very appreciative of your circumstances. It's almost that's when you're being tested to be the most grateful when everything is just so hard and difficult to deal with. And I think that um, you can grow in your appreciation for your life and for the people around you, your experiences by just being very present and um, taking things as they come and uh, not, I guess, being in denial or kind of rejecting things, you know? It's like when you go through something hard, um, there's that wanting to run away from it or maybe numb out, Mm, maybe just me. (laughs) But I realized that really the only way through to get through tough things is to go through them. And uh, there's always a lesson to be learned. And I just, uh, I think that's how we can be more appreciative of our lives by uh, tapping into the experience and growing from it. I love the connection that you bring up in order to be more appreciative. Like, you know, some of, it's kind of um, a bit of a paradox or an irony where a person's individual struggles will actually encourage them to be more appreciative of what they have because it's like, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, we're bound to come through struggles, but then of course, one day everyone will eventually like, we'll reach a point where we manage to overcome them. And then when we overcome those specific struggles, we've learned and then we've grown from them. And those are important aspects that will help you to be more appreciative of everything that you have, because it, it comes to show that, you know, this is life's way of testing us. And the ultimate way to pass the test is by, you know, just, you know, appreciating the good that you have, all the good that happens. And another thing that I wanted to bring up was you mentioned the importance of family and family is a really important support system. I really cannot emphasize that enough when it comes to family, you know, I encourage everyone to, you know, just be thankful and be appreciative of everything that you all have. Even if we come through struggle at some point, I just want you all to know that we'll make it through the end. Now, I guess um, the second to the last question, how would you define the relationship between music and support? Music and support. Uh, Well, I wouldn't be able to get my music done if it weren't for the support of my family, of my friends, like literally, um, they are the reasons why I'm able to do what I'm doing now. And I feel like this isn't isn't just my, I guess, as you term it, success. It's everybody's because everybody was part of it ever since I was a kid. Um, The support that my parents gave me, the support that my family gave me when it came to music, that all shaped me um, to be able to do what I'm doing now. Uh, And it's, what good is it really to be able to achieve what you want to achieve without the loving support of your family and your friends. So um, music is um, but a, I guess, product or an output of support. And of course, the people that appreciate it the most, the fans, the audience, can't do it without them. Literally cannot do it without them. All right, so I actually really like how you bring all of that up of course it's like you know with the like you know support from like you know everyone and then I also support from the fans too like that's a very important aspect that that comes in because you know the fans honestly fans are really they're really the thing that encourage us to keep going forward and you know and just keep on doing everything you know no matter how many fans you have all that matters is that you have at least one And whether that fan be, you know, ourselves, all that matters is that we have at least one. Because you know what? Having one fan will always encourage us to do our best, even if it's just ourselves. So that's where it becomes an important of, I mean, uh, an aspect of self-support. So what I actually thought was pretty cool was you also, um, something I kind of noticed was when it comes to positive vibes, appreciation, and support, all three of them actually kind of intermingle with each other Mm -hmm. in a sense. And 
whether and depending on the sources, whether it's, you know, ourselves or family or our friends, it's like all of them like kind of um, encourage one another, like they're all connected. So yeah. I really like how all of this comes together. So the final question that I wanted to ask was, do you have any final takeaways on positivity, appreciation and support? I guess you said it best. Uh, those things are really interconnected and uh, are needed in order for you to, I guess, be a pal, to have pals. Um, the best way to, you know, uh, be a friend or to have friends is to be a friend first, uh, especially being a friend to yourself so that uh, you can, I guess, do your best, do the things that you want to do and uh, support others to do the same. Oh my gosh, that was pretty <laughs> good, like, you know. <laughs> That's a very great takeaway scene. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you and my fellow pals who are listening, let's give Siege a round of applause. She deserves it. She deserves this for like, you know, all the hard work she's done, you know, all the advice that she offers, you know, with like, you know, the love, I mean, like, you know, like love, self-love, and then as well as, you know, mainly, positivity, appreciation, and support. Like, you know, the idea of all of them coming together and then as well as, you know, maintaining passion and determination and never giving up. You know, I really love how Siege brings all of that up. And, you know, since she's doing all of those, that's how she's like, you know, that's how she's like, you know, managing to do very well in her journey because, you know, she just maintains like all that inner, like, you know, inner like self-respect and then you know there's also aspects of support so it's like all of those come into play as well come into play with regards to you know positivity appreciation and support so Sage, I just want to let you know when I hear all of this everything is literally music to my ears because it's, like, <laughs> oh it's like super well and I just want you to know I cannot wait to hear any more of your upcoming projects and songs but ultimately once you make it to the top, I hope I could sit in the front row to watch the concert. Oh, what? Of course you are. Of course Yay! You, are. you are. Yay! Oh, we'll see when I, if and when I get there. You will Wish get there. Luck. <laughs> you will get there. Siege, you have worked so hard on all of this, and I just want you to know the results are definitely worth it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I guess before we go, I just wanted to ask, how can our fellow pals reach you and where can we check out your music? And another thing we also wanted, I wanted to ask was, do you have any upcoming projects that you're working on? Um, I guess right now I'm just enjoying uh, my latest release, By Your Side. Uh, you can check out the music video for that on YouTube. Just look up By Your Side by Sea Trankara. You can also follow me on Instagram at Siege Frankera. Um, I have a Facebook page too, we'll post there sometimes. Uh, everything is pretty much there. And uh, I don't have a release coming up just yet. Still trying to enjoy the last one. But uh, if you like what you're hearing or you like my music, I guess stay tuned because there's more coming up. Perfect. Thank you so much, Siege. You know, this was a really wonderful interview. And to you, my fellow pals who are listening, I hope that all of you can be inspired by all of this. With that being said, Siege, I do wish you the best of luck on your journey and your music career. I just want you to know, I believe in you. You're gonna make it to the top, girl. And I always believe in you. Cause it's like, you worked so hard, Siege. You have, and it's like, everything is like coming together. And I really love how the results are going for. You know, just keep doing you, Siege. And just make sure you, you know, keep working because, you know, I'm really excited for how everything's going to come. Thank you. I cannot do it without James, without everybody. So that means a lot to me that you guys believe in me. Thank you. Perfect. 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 21. <laughs> <laughs> my gosh. Well, that's it for today, my fellow pals. I just want to say... Thank you so much for tuning in to our episode today. This is your boy, Daniel Bandian, signing off for today. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.